Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. For the novel in this video, we're going to go back all the way to the year 1657. It's a novel by Serrano de Bergiac, originally written in French, and its title is The Other World, Comical History of the States and Empires of the Moon, and it's one of the earliest science fiction novels ever written. So let's all go to The Other World. Chapter 1 of How the Voyage Was Conceived Serrano had just finished an evening of entertainment at the Clamard, a house near Paris, and he and his friends were heading back home. There was a full moon, and they were all giving their thoughts on what the moon really was. And when it was Serrano's turn, he said he thought that the moon was a world just like ours, and that the earth served as a moon of the moon. His friends all laughed. And he went on to say, there is probably someone on the moon saying the same thing and being laughed at and that just made them laugh harder when he got home he found a book on his table that he didn't put there that was open to a passage that told about two old men who came in through a door that was shut and who told the author that they were inhabitants of the moon and then disappeared so he decided it must have been the same two old men that put the book on his table and opened it to that page so that's when he decided, you know what, if Prometheus can go to heaven, why not me? Chapter 2 of how the author set out and where he first arrived. So the first thing he did was head out to a country house where he designed something he hoped would take him up into the heavens. It was some battles of dew that he tied to himself and when the sun struck them, it caused them to blast him up into the clouds. But instead of going to the moon, it blew him off course, so he ended up breaking some of the bottles so he could come back down. When he landed, he didn't know where he was. He ran into some soldiers and he asked them where he was. They told him he was in France. It turns out he was in New France, in Canada. They took him to meet the governor, who put him up in a chamber in his apartment. Chapter 3 of his conversation with the Viceroy of New France and of the system of this universe. Before he could fall asleep, the Viceroy came up to see him and began to question him because it took him 12 hours to get from Paris to Canada. And the Viceroy is telling him that the world don't turn that fast, so how could this be possible? Serrano replied that the sun is the center of the universe and the earth goes around it, and that is common sense. And that it is the beams and influences of the sun that hit the earth and cause it to turn. But the Viceroy was a bit worried because he has some people that are telling him they don't believe Copernicus. They believe that it's hellfire that's in the center of the earth and the damned who are making a big bustle to avoid its flames are uh, making the earth turn. So we know then tells the Viceroy that people are fooled by what they see and he believes that the planets are worlds that go around the sun and that the stars are also suns that have their own planets around them. He goes on to say that the sun is not here for man, that it's an accident that it shines on man. So he goes on to discuss with the Viceroy the nature of the universe and of earth and how he thinks it is. Chapter 4 of how at last he sets out again for the moon, though without his own will. Over the next few days he made another machine to try and get him to the moon, but his first attempt failed. He fell in a valley and he went home leaving his machine behind to anoint himself because he was bruised and when he went back it was gone. It seemed that some soldiers had taken it and carried it to the fort. When he found it, they had already tied some fireworks to it and they were lighting them. So he hopped into the machine to try and undo the fireworks, but it was too late. They took off and he went up into the clouds. The fireworks kept going off and before he knew it, he was three quarters of the way to the moon. And he was able to confirm his belief that the earth is bigger than the moon. Chapter 5 of his arrival there and of the beauty of that country in which he fell. When he reached the moon, he fell and landed in an apple tree, apples which he promptly ate to satisfy his hunger. He landed close to where four rivers came together to make a lake, and he found that when you walk on the stones, they soften themselves under your feet. He found that everything was like a beautiful garden, and that he had grown younger by at least 14 years. Everything was young and new, and there was nothing poisonous there. Even the animals that came to drink seemed to be more rational than those on earth. Chapter 6 Of a youth whom he met there, and of their conversation. 
what that country was and the inhabitants of it. He had gone about half a league, which is 1.7 miles, through a forest of jasmine and myrtle when he saw a young man lying in the shade. He thought the youth was the most majestic beauty he had ever seen. The young man told him, it is not to me but to God you owe these humilities. Samuel said he thought he was coming to the moon but now he knows he's in a paradise. It turns out that it was Prometheus that took men to the moon in an attempt to avoid the violence that was plaguing earth. He brought the people to the moon in two vessels and he found that the moon was a garden. In fact, it was the Garden of Eden and he met people such as Elijah, Enoch, and the archangel. And somewhere in that garden is the apple of knowledge, which they keep telling him to wait until he eat it and he will know all things. But he just kept asking questions. Then he insulted Elijah and he stole an apple. And when he bit into it, everything disappeared. Chapter 7 being cast out from that country of the new adventures which befell him and of the demon of Socrates. When he left the garden, he ran into some men that he thought were beasts because they ran around on all fours. These men were 18 feet tall and they didn't believe that he was a man because he only walked on two legs. As they were trying to figure out what he was, they figured that he was a female of the queen's little animals. So they gave him to a man who kept strange animals and that man taught him to do tricks until the queen could send for him. It was while performing tricks that he met a man who talked to him in Greek and that man turned out to be the demon of Socrates. Proceeded to tell him about his travels and how he came to be on the moon. He also told him that he was born in the sun and that their world gets overpopulated because of the long lives of the inhabitants. Because of this, they are usually sent to the neighboring worlds and he had been commanded to go to earth. He also told him that the sun people live to be about 4,000 years old. They don't have bodies like humans, but they are forced to take bodies when they are pair man humans. After he's been talking to Socrates for a while, the man who had him on a leash pulled it and so made him jump so that the spectators could laugh. Chapter 8 of the languages of the people in the moon, of the manner of feeding there and paying the scot, and of how the author was taken to court. The only comfort he had during this time was speaking with Socrates. At this time, he couldn't understand the local language and they couldn't understand him. But it turns out that there was two languages, one for the elite and one for the regular people. But they could also speak through playing an instrument. So sometimes when they got tired of speaking, they would use an instrument to speak. It was then that Socrates reappeared to him again, this time not as a spirit, but as a man. Socrates was able to inhabit the body of a man who people thought were dead but was really unconscious. It turns out that the people in that country eat by breathing in the steam of the food they cook. At night they use flowers for beds and they had globes of 30 glow worms in them that they use for light. Next morning because he wanted to eat something solid instead of just smelling his food they went out and shot about 30 locks and when the locks fell on the ground they were already roasted. Then they continued their journey with him riding on his porter's back. Chapter 9 of the little Spaniard whom he met there and of his quaint wit of vacuum specific weights and sundry other philosophical matters. When he got to the palace, everyone who saw him assumed that he was the female of the queen's little animal. When the king saw him, he sent for a man that turned out to be the same size as him. The man spoke to him in Spanish and he answered back and everyone around him assumed that they were correct, that he was the female of the little animal. The man told him that he was carried to the moon by birds. He and the man who was Spanish then spent their time together speaking of all sorts of things about the nature of the universe, earth, things around them. Chapter 10 where the author comes in doubt whether he be a man, an ape or an estridge and of the opinion of the lunar philosophers concerning Aristotle. All this time the people of that country was arguing over what he was. So they decided to have a convention of states to determine once and for all what he was. They brought him before the assembly to begin questioning him and he failed in front of them because he couldn't prove that he was a man. So finally he decided to use the principles of Aristotle in his defense. 
But even that did not convince them because they didn't think that Aristotle was all that smart. So in the end, they voted that he wasn't a man, that maybe he was some kind of ostrich because he walked like them on two legs and he kept his head up like them. So they stuck him back in his birdcage, but he did get one of the queen's maids to fall in love with him. Chapter 11 of the manner of making war in the moon and of how the moon is not the moon nor the earth the earth. So the one who loved him came to him the next day and told him that the council is preparing to go to war and while they're at war she can find a way to help him escape. But he was more interested in finding out how they fight on the moon. Apparently how they fight is they both have the same amount of combatants on both sides and each side is matched up against the other. The strong against the strong, the weak against the weak, those with weapons against those with weapons. And if the losses are the same on both sides, then they will draw cuts to find out who will be proclaimed the victor. But sometimes they have their learned men fight each other using their wit and knowledge. And the one that wins, their side is declared the winner and they get to choose who the king will be. He was taken out one more time and questioned before the king and the council. They wanted him to admit that the moon was the world and the earth was the moon and at first he wouldn't do that but in the end in order to save his life he had to admit that the moon was the world and the earth was the moon chapter 12 of a philosophical entertainment it turns out that the person who helped him get out of prison was the demon of Socrates later at dinner they discussed the fact that parents should obey their children and that plants have souls chapter 13 of the little animals that make up our life and likewise cause our diseases and of the disposition of the towns in the moon. Later they discuss the fact that maybe the universe is like a great animal and the stars which are worlds are in this great animal and we and all the other animals are on these worlds and we in turn are worlds for nits and lice and handworms and other stuff and that these small stuff have even smaller stuff living on them and that the diseases may be caused by even smaller stuff. We then find out that there are two types of towns, ambulatory and sedentary. The ambulatory towns are on wheels and have sails and can go from place to place depending on the season. And the sedentary towns stay in one place, but they can be lowered into the ground or raised above the ground depending on the season. Chapter 14 of the original of all things of atomies and of the operation of the senses. We then discussed how the universe is made up of atomies and how these atomies work. And then how the senses work. Chapter 15 of the books in the moon and their fashion of death, burial and burning, of the manner of telling the time and of noses. His spirit, that's what he called the demon of Socrates, proposed that he would go and build a machine that will allow him to return to earth and while he's gone he left him some books that he may read books about the sun the covers of the books were made of diamonds and pearls his spirit had also left him an audible book the audible books were portable he could put them in his pockets and they had headphones that he called pendants so he could go walking and listen to his book at the same time so he had gone out and when he came back, dinner was over. So they asked him, why didn't he come back for dinner? And he said he didn't know the time. Apparently, all these people have big noses. That's how they tell the time. When they want to tell the time, they open their lips and the shadow of their nose fall on their teeth and acts like a sundial, giving them the precise time. Chapter 16 of Miracles and of Curing by the Imagination. The next morning he proceeded to have a discussion in which they told him that all their diseases can be cured by the imagination. That was why men in the old days on earth lived so long because they had great imaginations that cured their diseases. And that what miracles were, being cured by your imagination. Chapter 17 of the Arthur's Return to the Earth when he told the council he was leaving, they made him promise to tell everything about them to the people of earth. His spirit then grabbed him and took him to the earth. It took them a day and a half to get to the earth. He was put down in the outskirts of Rome where he visited some of the ruins. His cousin gave him the money for a passage back to France. There he published this memoir of his time on the moon as he promised the council of the moon he would. And that's how the book ended. 
I would like to thank you for watching and listening and subscribe if you haven't. Give us a like and drop us a comment and I will see you in the next video.